Hi Sagittarius Sun and Rising, welcome to your February 2022 Astro Update. It's Raina here, Sun in Sagittarius. And um, this is a month that is usually going to be very harmonious for Sages. You do, if you're, if you are a Sun in Sag like I am, also look at your rising sign. For instance, I'm a late degree Taurus rising and Taurus and Aquarius form a square, whereas sun and Aquarius form a sextile. So, it, you know, you have to, you have to look at things at both uh, levels and people have asked me, well, what's more accurate, your sun sign or your rising sign? And you, you really want to synthesize um, these, you want to put them together. I hope I said synthesize, <laughs> synthesize. Yeah. Um, you don't, you don't want to just, um, necessarily pick one over the other. You don't have to, they can both be relevant. And I think that in terms of mundane events, the natal chart, which is based on your time of birth is certainly, um, quite relevant, but as you become more of a conscious co-creator, I think that the solar chart can be more relevant to your life because you can almost uh, make the case that your natal chart is part of that matrix energy about, you know, what you came into this, um, on this planet, uh, but not necessarily what you chose to do how you're choosing to project your energy. So I would just say, um, look at them both. Um, to give you an example, this new moon that is happening either on the 31st, if you live um, west of uh, the East Coast, and um, on the 1st of, the 31st of January and the 1st of February, if you live in other areas of the world, this is going to be at 12 degrees of Aquarius. Um, for me, in my natal chart, this falls in my 10th house of career. In my solar chart, um, because I'm a later degree of Sag, um, it probably would fall in my second house of earned income. So if we combine those, we can see that common thread of... Um, of your, the work that you're doing, getting, uh, paid, maybe having some kind of a new route that you're taking to earn money. And, um, so there is like, those are both, both earth houses. So that would make sense. So you kind of, uh, look for common factors that could link those two things together. Now, um, this is a general forecast, so I'm just going to do it, uh, in that, in that way. And with that new moon energy for Sages, this is going to be third house. Okay. And the third house is the house of new, um, I mean the, the new moon here would be new types of, um, teaching assignments. If you're a writer, new things that you want to write a blog, social media can be the third house, but it might be a new attitude you have, uh, towards social media. This has been something I've been, uh, pondering about, I don't know about a, a social media fast per se, because it, when you do things like a fast, you go to one extreme and then it makes you want to go to the other extreme when you, uh, have completed the, the fast, you know, just like when you deprive yourself of food, you might begin to overeat after that period is over with. So I don't necessarily want to encourage imbalances. Um, so I'm just thinking about ways to engage with the internet in a much more, um, controlled way, cutting way, way back and things like that. That almost seems like a full moon energy of letting go of something, but it really can be both. It can be with this new moon. It could be a new way of engaging with, um, with this. And this is enhanced by the fact that Aquarius and its ruler Uranus are, um, connected to, 
to technology. So a new attitude about technology for sure. The third house can also be, like I said, a writing project, a teaching project, something with the mind. Um, you might be scouting new, new neighborhoods to live. This might have some kind of a connection with moving. So if you are thinking of moving, uh, Sag, you might be just kind of doing some groundwork where you're walking through neighborhoods and seeing if you would actually like to spend all your time there rather than just moving and finding out after the fact. So yeah, things like that could be the local area. In other words, is the third house brothers and sisters are, and extended family members are the third house as well. And that could be something that is, that has changed that you are engaging with them in a different way. On the third, Mercury stations direct at 24 degrees of Capricorn. For Sag, this is the second house of earned income. And this is an area that it, it has been affected because of uh, Venus retrograde and, and uh, Venus has gone uh, direct at the end of January. So that can seem like it's starting to stabilize, but it's still in that shadow period. So um, it, I don't know about you, but I've had some definite snafus. It's very strange. Never had this before um, with money issues and really feeling like, oh my gosh, you know, what the heck is going on here? I mean, multiple, you know, more than one. And then I just got the, the last one resolved and it was on my end, I guess you would call it because I didn't realize I had another account attached to my PayPal account and a, a money transfer that I made got sent to another bank account instead of my main one, my partner's bank account to be exact. And so finally that was uncovered. Um, and as I record this, uh, Venus is still doing its thing retrograde in that, in that second house. And it, it really has reminded me of, um, a Mercury retrograde and, uh, Mercury, um, now Mercury is stationing direct, but both of these, planets are still in their shadow um, period. Mercury until about, I don't know, 17th or 18th, I think, and Venus until early March. And this is, and because Mercury, that this is important because Mercury did go back into Capricorn. It started out its retrograde in, Ur uh, in um, Aquarius. So, um, and by the way, um, the third house can be, um, business issues or commerce. So that could, if you know, then it's going back in the second into your money sector. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could, um, have been dealing with some stuff since December, uh, finances, finance related, and even maybe, um, slowing down sometimes that's, that might be a possibility too. And, um, on the 14th, Mercury goes back into Aquarius. So then it's back into the third house, but luckily it's, um, since it's direct and it's moving forward, we can just count the days until it has left the shadow period. Um, and, and, uh, Anything that you have dealt with that has to do with your, with a business or paperwork or, you know, like contracts or something like that, they can get resolved and move along and start to, you can start to see progress with that. And also if, if you have been going back and forth, maybe this is something connected to a potential job, especially if it's in the teaching field or, um, if you're thinking about getting a training that you had previously put on the shelf, um, that might be back 
on the front burner. Perhaps you had some kind of a fall, not a falling out, but um, miscommunication with a sibling. This could be more... Um, this could this could resolve things. On the 16th, we have a full moon at 28 degrees of Leo. Of course, Leo is a fellow fire sign. And this is in the house that Sag rules, the ninth house. So that's interesting because a full moon can bring something to its uh, completion, especially a, a later degree full moon could be like the cherry at the top of the cake about something that you have been wanting to happen. So maybe this has something to do with travel plans, but this would be of a long distance variety. The ninth house can be far away. And maybe this has been something you've been working towards for quite a while. Maybe this is a um, finishing some kind of um, training that has some spiritual connection to it and this is the the last the um closing out ceremony or whatever it is that you're doing yoga teacher training is what i was alluding to perhaps on the 18th the sun goes into pisces and for sag this is the fourth house of home and family and so when you see these transits in that fourth house, you know that um, the emphasis is on the, dom the domestic side of life. And there's going to be a new moon here, I believe, on the 2nd of March. So that could indicate new developments on the home front. Also, I didn't put this down um, when I was compiling this list, but... Oh, you know why? Because it's actually from January. I was just listening to um, the spiritual message and they had all these astrological transits and they were talking about the North Node going into Taurus. And I don't think I included that on last month's, in last month's um, forecast. And so I'll just talk about that briefly in case I didn't, I didn't include that. And this is, for those listening before January 18th, this, that's when it's supposed to happen. And it will start at the 29th degree of Taurus. And this is going to be for Sag in the sixth house of health and work. And so this can be a time when these issues are at the forefront. And um, really at the end of the day, the sixth house is about the practical side of life. So kind of like the day-to-day -day existence and how it's, uh, what do they call that? Like um, work a day? I don't know what the, the proper way to characterize it. But the bottom line is that it's all about doing things from a perspective that is um, grounded and orderly, um, disciplined, I would say, and having, you know, like regimented, having like some kind of time management. And if you're anything like me, I, I have my natal Neptune in the sixth house. So I need that. I need this <laughs> desperately. I need this North node here because maybe it will uh, help me to find the perfect um, schedule for myself that has enough freedom. Sages need freedom within all of what they're doing in order to thrive. Because um, I remember being a teenager and in the 80s and, and those magazines, I used to read like Mademoiselle magazine, you know, and it was actually for adult women. And I would read these things 
and other types of magazines for women. And they would say, try to schedule, try to carve out at least 20 minutes so you can take a bubble bath or something like that. And I just remember thinking, God, you know, who doesn't have 20 minutes for a bubble bath? And in observing certain people, I could see that there are people who run their lives like they're checking off uh, things on their to-do list. And that's what their whole life boils down to. And I can't, I couldn't tell if they derived any pleasure from that. I think it was more like it felt safe or it just felt familiar, but it wasn't necessarily enjoyable because how can it be if that's the, the type of way that you are constructing your life? And these are people that have more, um, you know, kind of autonomy because if somebody's working nine to five, they don't have the luxury of being able to do something at two o'clock that, that is on their list. They have to do the bidding of somebody else. So um, I always said that, I, you know, my perfect schedule would involve spaciousness where it's not about, oh, you have to do it at X time. Maybe, you know, um, it can just be during the morning, these are the things that I'm going to accomplish, but I'm not going to say I have to accomplish them at exactly this time or that time. So these things are going to come into focus and the eclipses are connected to these um, transits with the nodes. And by the way, the south node in Scorpio is traveling the 12th house for Sag. So that means that if you are somebody who considers yourself very immersed in solitude, spiritual practices are very um, comforting to you and things like that, not to say abandon them, always be around other people. But it's time to maybe let go of some of that because maybe you have been hiding behind the solitude. Maybe you have been hiding behind those spiritual practices. You know, that can happen. People can use anything as a means of escape, escapism. So being able to show up in a more visible way may be something that is important at this time in your life's journey. I would definitely see where the North Node and South Node are going to be in your natal and your solar charts, not just one over the other. And then it can give you more guidance on how to be what you're supposed to be, not in a grandiose sort of way, but just at this moment in your life's journey. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated, Sag. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care.